With Sarah Boone's unaliving trial set for October this year and the letting go of her eighth attorney, it's very important that we take it back to the beginning and see exactly what the heck she's being accused of. And we're gonna start by going back to the original complaint to let y'all know the details that the police knew at the time of arresting her. If you don't know the case that I'm talking about, Sarah Boone is being accused of unaliving her boyfriend by placing him in a suitcase and going to bed and leaving him there. That's right, she left him in a suitcase overnight and was surprised that he was unalive by the time she woke up. So let's jump right into the complaint to see exactly what the police knew at the time of filing the affidavit requesting that the court arrest her for the unaliving of her boyfriend. Make sure y'all keep watching to the end because there's a lot of good details in the police affidavit and we're actually going to watch the video that she recorded of her crime. Like who does that? Let's jump right into it. On February 24th of 2020 at 13.01 hours, which is about 1 p.m., in Orange County, deputies responded to her apartment, Winter Park, Florida, in reference to a female reporting that her boyfriend, Jorge Torres Jr., was unalive. The caller later identified as Sarah Boone, date of birth in October. Her trial is starting right around her eight. Oh my gosh, okay. The caller later identified as Sarah Boone reported playing a game of hide and seek. Two grown adults playing hide and seek with him in the suitcase. And how did he get in the suitcase? You put him in the suitcase. So how are we playing hide and seek if you know exactly where he is? Anyways, I digress. Let's go on. Sarah and Jorge jokingly thought it would be funny if Jorge got in the suitcase located in the living room. Sarah zipped Jorge in the suitcase. Sarah mentioned that she and Jorge had been consuming alcohol during the night and she went upstairs and passed out in her bed without unzipping him. Okay. She later woke up to her cell phone ringing multiple times around 1100 hours. So about 11 o'clock, approximately two hours before she actually called the police at one o'clock. She went downstairs and did not see Jorge anywhere in the apartment. She then realized that he was possibly still inside the suitcase. Sarah unzipped the suitcase and found Jorge unresponsive and not breathing. Shortly after the 911 call, deputies arrived on the scene Orange County Fire Department confirmed Jorge was in fact deceased at 1307. So the police and the fire department was moving really fast because they got there in six minutes after she called. The decedent was found lying near the front door of the residence near a blue suitcase. A small laceration was evident on the decedent's lip and what appeared to be some bruising around his eye. Sarah Boone was interviewed on February 24th at 1637. So this is just around four hours after she called the police. An audio recorded interview was done with Sarah Boone located in the unmarked agency vehicle outside her residence at the apartment in Winter Park, Florida. The following is a synopsis of Sarah Boone's sworn recorded statement. I read verbatim to Sarah her constitutional Miranda warnings. Sarah agreed that she understood what I had just read to her. On February 23rd, 2020, at approximately 16 hours, Sarah was located at her residence in Winter Park along with her boyfriend, Jorge Torres, who also resides in the apartment. Only Sarah and Jorge were located at the residence. Sarah's son, Lucas Boone, would sometimes be at her residence when it was her days per the custody agreement she has with her ex-husband. Sarah said her and Jorge were painting pictures and completing a puzzle while sharing a bottle of Woodbridge Chardonnay wine. As the evening went on, Sarah said her and Jorge decided to play a game of hide and seek. Sarah hid upstairs in her shower first and said Jorge never came to look for her. After a while, she decided to go downstairs where she found Jorge. Sarah and Jorge both thought it would be funny if she zipped Jorge in the blue suitcase that was located downstairs in the living room area that had a few miscellaneous items they had both planned to donate. Now, my thing is, if you were playing hide and seek, what then made you think it was going to be fun to put him in a suitcase? And I would really like to know how tall he is. I don't even think I could fit in a suitcase. Like, I would never think, how about I get in a suitcase? That's insane. But I mean, I guess some people are really small, and I guess it could be cool to see if someone can fit in a suitcase. But just thinking, I mean, I guess it could be fun, but not in this situation, right? Jorge willingly got into the suitcase, and Sarah zipped the suitcase up, but two of Jorge's fingers were able to stick out of the suitcase. 
I wonder why she said that because she wants to make it look like he was able to get out if he tried, right? Sarah and Jorge were both laughing that she zipped him into the suitcase. Sarah explained that the attached handle that made it easier to zip the suitcase was broken, but a paper clip was in the zipper and she was able to zip the suitcase up. On February 24, 2020, at approximately 30 hours, she decided she was going to go upstairs while Jorge was still located in the suitcase, thinking he can get himself out. Sarah laid down in her bed and fell asleep approximately 20 to 30 minutes after going upstairs. Sarah assumed Jorge was going to get out of the suitcase and come to bed as well. Sarah said neither her nor Jorge were drunk from the wine. Sarah woke up in the morning and heard her cell phone ringing multiple times but ignored the calls. Sarah said her cell phone was left downstairs from the night prior. Sarah knew her ex-husband, Brian Boone, was calling because he was the only person who called her repeatedly to see if she was getting their son, Lucas Boone, from school. Sarah said she stayed upstairs for a while and assumed Jorge was downstairs on the laptop looking for employment. Sarah said she went downstairs at approximately 1,100 hours and realized she could not find Jorge anywhere in the apartment. She freaked out and remember the last time she saw Jorge was when she zipped him up in the suitcase. Sarah unzipped the suitcase and found Jorge unresponsive. Sarah called Brian back, told him Jorge was dead and begged him to come to her residence. Now, why would you call your ex-husband instead of the police? I know you got to pick up your son, but why are you calling that man? And Brian, why are you going over there? Like, what is going on? Brian, who only resides a few minutes away. When Brian got to the residence, he walked into the apartment, saw Jorge unresponsive on the floor, and told Sarah she needed to call 911. At least he did not try to help her cover it up. Good for Brian. Brian then immediately walked outside and stayed there until law enforcement arrived while Sarah followed the instructions from the 911 operator. Brian was out of there. Soon, on February 24, 2020, Sarah gave verbal and written consent by signing a waiver and affidavits form for the Orange County Sheriff Office to search her iPhone XS. Digital forensic investigator Junella Udon responded to the scene and began to download the cell phone. While the cell phone was being downloaded, two videos were found on the cell phone. The first video began recording on February 24, 2020 at 2312 hours. This is where I get a little bit confused because didn't they say that this all started on the 23rd? So why would there already be a video from the nighttime of the day that the police were called? I'm a little bit confused on that, but maybe it was just a typo. Hey, repeatedly yelling out Sarah's name. Sarah told Jorge, for everything you've done to me, F you. Sarah was laughing when she said, F you, stupid. Jorge repeatedly calling out Sarah's name. Jorge said, I can't F and breathe seriously. Sarah replied, yeah, that's what you do when you choke me. Jorge continued to repeat himself, telling Sarah he could not breathe. In this video, the suitcase was facing downward, and you can see Jorge pushing on the suitcase in an attempt to get out. The video is two minutes and three seconds long. The second video began recording on February 24th at 2020 hours. Jorge yelled out Sarah's name. The suitcase was now in a different position, facing upward, and moved over towards the left side of the living room. The video was 22 seconds long. A synopsis of Jorge Torres' autopsy. On February 25th, 2020, Jorge Torres Jr. received an autopsy located at the medical examiner's office. During the autopsy, it was noted that Jorge had long nail scratches to his mid-upper back, a large nail scratch to the back of his neck, contusions on his left shoulder, left skull and forehead contusions considered blunt force trauma, and a cut near his lip. Follow-up interview with Sarah Boone on February 25th, 2020 at approximately 1,500 hours. So now we're on to the next day. Sarah drove herself to the Orange County Sheriff's Office. Detective Scott Lowen and the writer of this document conducted an audio and video recorded interview with Sarah. The following is a synopsis of Sarah Boone's sworn recorded statement. So remember, this is her second statement that she's given. I read verbatim to Sarah her constitutional Miranda warnings. Sarah agreed she understood what I had just read to her. After informing Sarah about the injuries to Jorge's body, she continued to deny any physical altercation occurred between the two of them. Sarah was shown the approximate two-minute video that she recorded on her cell phone. Not even halfway through, Sarah no longer wished to watch the video. Sarah said she did not remember making the two videos. Sarah said the video looked bad. Sarah denied intentionally leaving Jorge in the suitcase. Sarah was asked why she intentionally went upstairs and waited for Jorge to come upstairs and did not check on him or let him out prior to going upstairs. Sarah replied, I don't know. 
Sarah contradicted her original statement and began to blame the consumption of alcohol. Sarah was informed she was not free to leave and under arrest. Sarah was then transported to jail because of her inconsistent statements and the video found on her phone. The injuries to Jorge, they decided to write this probable cause affidavit for Sarah Boone's arrest for the unaliving of Jorge. So when you hear this story in the news, you think, wow, that's insane. But when you listen to how her story changed and the fact that she decided to record a video to get all the evidence against her needed, she may have gotten away with this had she not recorded the video. There would have been no way of telling how this happened if Sarah was responsible. But you see the aggression of herself against Jorge in this video that we are going to take a look at right now. And y'all, viewer discretion is advised. This video is very disturbing, especially when you know the outcome of this case, which all of you know because we literally just went over the affidavit. So you know that the person inside the suitcase is Jorge Torres Jr., and he ends up unalive just a few hours after this video is recorded. So let's check out how Sarah was acting in this video. And y'all let me know whether you think that this was just a game or if she was intentionally doing something harmful to Jorge. And I do have the video sped up just a little bit, okay? Hello. For everything you've done to me. Hello. For everything you've done to me. Hello. You. Sarah. Sarah. <laughs> you. Sarah. Stupid. Sarah. That's my name. Don't wear it up. Sarah. I can't Sarah. Yeah, that's when you do when you choke me. Sarah. Sarah. This does not look like a game, y'all. Sarah. Sarah, I can't breathe. Babe. That's on you. Sarah, I can't breathe. <laughs> it's on you. Sarah. Reel around some. I want to give it for it extra. Because <laughs> I got this. Sarah. Reel around Sarah. Some. Sarah, I can't, I can't breathe, babe. Oh. That's what Sarah. I feel like when you drink on me. Sarah. Yeah. You should probably shut Sarah. up. I simply cannot believe that she recorded that video and that she tried to tell the police that she was not drunk. In the video, she sounded drunk or maybe she was a little bit emotionally distressed. I don't know if I could tell if she was laughing or if she was like trying to stop herself from crying, but the police did indicate that it sounded like laughing to them. Y'all can let me know whether y'all thought she was laughing or whether y'all thought that she was actually sniffling. It kind of sounded like it could be both to me, but this definitely did not look like they were playing game this looked malicious not helpful not a game not something that both of them agreed to especially when you get to the point where he's calling out your name telling you he can't breathe and you're saying f you and baby you should shut up that's absolutely ridiculous condolences to jorge's family and hopefully he gets some justice we are going to continue to cover this case and we're going to talk about how sarah managed to get rid of eight attorneys and now is responsible for representing herself in the actual trial scheduled for October 7th of this year. I don't know how she's going to do it. The evidence is like stacked against her. And I really don't think that she's going to be able to come out of this with a not guilty verdict. Let me know what y'all think in the comments. Don't forget to hit the like button. And if you're not subscribed, make sure you do because you're not going to want to miss the updates in this case as we move forward.